Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. New South Wales teachers strike for wages. Colombia's Gustavo Petro faces renewed threats. Ballot students protest disappearances in Pakistan. And Turkey announces plans to repatriate Syrian refugees. We begin with Australia, where public school teachers in New South Wales observed a strike on May 4th. Thousands of workers marched through Sydney's business district to the Parliament House on Wednesday. The 24-hour action was organized by the New South Wales Teachers Federation, or the NSWTF. Teachers have been protesting poor working conditions and low wages. NSWTF said that over 70% of teachers stated that they were considering other job options. Around 10,000 teachers reportedly exited the profession in 2021. 73% of teachers polled said that their workloads were unmanageable. 90% indicated that their pay did not reflect their responsibilities and expertise, and 89% reported significant shortages of staff. Teachers walked out on Wednesday for the second time in six months, defying a last-minute appeal by the government. The NSW Public Service has a legislated cap on wage increases at 2.5% per year. Workers have been demanding that the limit be scrapped given rising costs of living and inflation which currently stands at over 5%. Australia's Reserve Bank has also announced an increase in interest rates. The NSW government asked the union to delay the strike, saying it would review the cap in June's budget. NSWTF has said that it has been trying to negotiate with the government for over a year, but received no guarantee for a wage hike. It has pushed for a pay increase of 5 to 7.5 percent. Wage and staffing-related issues have prompted action across various sectors in Australia, including aged care and nursing. Colombia's presidential frontrunner Gustavo Petro has faced renewed threats against his life. The left-wing candidate from the historic pact was set to hold campaign events in the coffee region on May 3rd and 4th. However, he was forced to cancel after reports of a planned attack by La Cordillera. The paramilitary group operates in the coffee region and is involved in drug trafficking. Petro's campaign stated that La Cordillera had brought control over regional civil authorities. This also extends to politicians, the police and the military. The campaign cited credible sources informing them that a member of the SIGIN was involved in the attack against Petro. The police intelligence unit has been accused in the killing of student leader Lucas Via in 2021. Interior Minister Daniel Palacios announced on May 3rd that additional security would be provided to Petro. A recent opinion poll placed Petro in the lead with 43.6% of the prospective votes in the first round of elections. He has pledged to address Colombia's severe income disparity through anti-poverty redistributive programs. He has spoken of raising taxes on the wealthy and cutting back on coal production. His running mate is renowned Afro-Colombian activist and lawyer Francia Marquez. She has emphasized plans including economic investment in violence-affected rural areas. The historic pact candidates have received threats from paramilitary groups multiple times. These include the far-right Black Eagles. Petro and Marquez have been demanding guarantees to conduct their campaigns safely ahead of the May 29th election. Next, we go to Pakistan, where Baloch Students' Council has launched a sit-in outside the National Press Club in Islamabad. The protest has been organized against the abduction and disappearance of two university students. On April 28th, a video showed a group beating a man in Islamabad's Punjab University. The person was identified as Bebagra Imdad Baloch. He was then shoved into a van and taken away. Imdad is a student at the National University of Modern Languages and had been visiting a relative at the time of his abduction. The case sparked renewed protests by Balot students against the targeting and harassment by state forces. A sit-in protest by Punjab University students was repressed by the administration and the police. Imdad's disappearance has been reportedly linked to the suicide bombing at Karachi University last week. Two Baloch students, Dildar and Najib Rashid, have allegedly also been taken in relation to the blasts. 
the bomb attack was claimed by the Baloch Liberation Army's Majid Brigade. Balochistan has witnessed decades of insurgency and widespread rights violation by state forces. Despite holding large reserves of minerals, 52% of its population is living below the poverty line. According to the Voice for Missing Baloch Persons, at least 5,000 people have been forcibly disappeared in the past 20 years. The protest in Islamabad is also to demand the release of another Baloch student, Abdul Hafiz. A student at the Kwede Azam University, he was taken by armed men in February. Families of missing persons also held protests in Balochistan's Turbat city on May 4th. We end this episode with Turkey, where the government has announced plans to repatriate Syrian refugees. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan stated on May 3rd that at least 1 million refugees would be quote-unquote encouraged to return. He added that they would be resettled in over 100,000 houses built by his government in collaboration with NGOs. The projects will be located in areas including Azaz, Al-Bab and Tal Abyad in rebel-held Idlib. Turkey has previously invaded and captured large parts of the province in 2016 and 2019, claiming to create a quote-unquote safe zone for refugees. Erdogan has claimed that nearly 500,000 Syrians have returned to these areas since 2016. Turkey also claims to have built 57,000 houses for 50,000 families since then. An estimated 3.7 million refugees live in Turkey. They have increasingly become targets of xenophobic attacks by right-wing forces and politicians. This includes rhetoric blaming refugees for rising economic problems in Turkey and the quote-unquote destruction of local culture. Syrian people and their businesses have also been attacked. The Republican People's Party and Nationalist Movement Party have pledged to repatriate all Syrian refugees if they win next year's election. The Erdogan government's actions have prompted allegations of forced return or refoulement. This is a violation of international law. The conditions in Syria continue to be dire with 90% of the population living in poverty. Idlib itself is an active war zone. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.